I'm gonna say it right here, right now. I got right here, right top now, 16. <laughs> Yes, emerge. I will emerge with my <laughs> anger. Why in Prince's name is Dilik all the way up here and not bottom five, bottom ten? I absolutely and utterly completely disagree with this. Mm -hmm. What is this atrocious ranking for her? You asked for a tier list and you know what? You made one. Uh, hi everybody, I'm Coach of Creations here and today I'm joined by... Rep DCG. Hello, everybody. Nice to see you again. And today we're going to be reviewing uh, from Reddit and as well as the uh, Genius Invocation Discord uh, user slash Luna Vin's 3.8 community source character card ratings and tier list. And before we jump into it, we have to say something. The following scores and rankings were calculated using the community source data from an anonymous survey. The survey was available at r slash Genius Invocation TCG subreddit and its Discord. Characters were scored individually on a scale from 1 to 10, with 1 being bad and 10 being amazing. This was done with the purpose of viewing each card independently. Sounds in the fluids and influence of the deck. Ratings are completely subjective, so don't jump at somebody's throat. This is your cooking. Uh, we're gonna make jokes throughout the tier list and stuff, but you know, uh, we don't we don't actually mean it. Uh, all this data collection is actually very uh, very well made by uh, Lunavin, and we would love you to show your support actually by you know checking out the original post in the description. I'm gonna have the link, but also because during 4.0, which is right now, uh, you can vote in the 4.0 tier list and you can put your opinion and your cooking. So you disagree with this tier list? I mean, for starters, I mean, you should have voted. That's your problem. But secondly, uh, you can affect the future poll. So go down, go down in the description, go click it. Uh, but anyway, the first category is going to be a number ranking from the bottom of the barrel to the cream of the crop. So you're going to see uh, what is rated as the worst character and the best characters. Are you ready? Oh God, what are we going to oh see boy. when I turn this page? <laughs> uh, this is, uh, I believe this is about to be very controversial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy. All right, uh, drum roll please, because in last place we have... Oh no. No, why would you do that to her? <laughs> I don't agree. <laughs> why? I, Are you, I don't you mean think like she's a tier list character. in general, or like do you mean just this, the, just specifically? Oh no, I'm, I'm just looking at the bottom right now. I, I, mm -hmm. <laughs> seeing the bottom, I don't know if I want to see the rest. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Uh, but this is a community vote. This mm -hmm. is a community vote. This is the, what the people have decided. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at Ember. I'm gonna have to confess, I did play with her. Ooh, She's not that bad. Go. People, I feel like they did not play Ember in order to rate her properly. Yeah, I can... I will say she's not top... Tw I, I don't think she's even top 20. Mm -hmm. Is she maybe bottom 10 to bottom 20? Yes. Is she the worst? No. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I think uh, I think it definitely comes from people not really understanding Amber's kit because they see you know you summon Baron Bunny and then you do a little you I do a little it. pyro burst. It's like oh this is just like nothing. <laughs> to be fair, her burst is unimpressive. Mm -hmm. I'll say it. It is pretty unimpressive, but Baron Bunny is surprisingly useful. Mm -hmm. If you try to play a stall variant with her, like mm -hmm. any type of stall, A B C. She can a, help. B C. <laughs> Hey, babe, I be see. True. But uh, right above Amber, I see Beidou. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what people are doing. Beidou was buffed. And Beidou is way better than people give her credit for it. Mm -hmm. For her to be all the way down here. I'll say it, I can understand Amber being down. Beidou, I will... I think it's because of what people have played with her beforehand. Yeah. And her being the worst character before the buffs yeah absolutely after I... the buff she's not down here no yeah i absolutely agree um part of it right is that beto like you know like you said like she was bottom tier dude like before before all of this and she actually did get buffs in 3.8 but i think everyone's so scarred that they're just not willing to experiment which is really funny uh because in our tournaments right we have a uh, clique curb uh going a uh, pretty consistent for one uh with their kokomi beto deck which is super neat yeah it is an interesting bag, but yeah. Unfortunate for Beto, I think she deserves way better than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what else do we find interesting on this list? Ooh. Oh, I think it's your boy. How do you feel about them putting your boy at 43rd? So... Are you disappointed in Reddit? <laughs> so, 3.7 was the big patch with a lot of cards added. Mm -hmm. 
In 3.7, I think I played with basically every card besides maybe Lecter. Mm -hmm. I, I tried especially Tartaglia extensively, and at that point in 3.7, I thought he was the worst card out of the new patch in 3.7, right? Tartaglia? Worst card? Yeah. Yo! <laughs> With that Me, stack he is kit? my number one favorite character, and I still had to rate him as such. Mm -hmm. uh, I do think he's still not that great. He has a problem of being a hydro normal attack character based, like a based character, mm -hmm. which means he would need something like Beidou to work or Yoimiya. Too bad Yoimiya and Beidou are too slow, and then you you can't really make use of Tartaglia. Mm -hmm. Something I've seen some people try was the double for Dwee Tartagli deck with yeah. Kree as well. That's the most functional is... one, I'd say. Yeah, it is. Which is okay. No, it is fine, definitely. And people are trying to also sometimes cheese a first turn kill with Tartaglia. Mm -hmm. Or like a second turn 7 to 8 damage buyers with him. Mm -hmm. Which is good. That is very good. But other than that, um, he doesn't have a place, really. It's unfortunate. Yeah, he um, has an he has a good base kit, but not a team. He doesn't have a deck to fit properly. Definitely surprising too. Uh, with how stacked Tartaglia's kit is, you know he has the fact that he can he has a stance switch mode. You know, so he can deal hydro damage yeah. with his NAs. He has, you know, he has two different bursts that to do two very different things. Uh, you know, being able to refund energy to yourself or just do like five billion damage and also Riptide set. It's like. It's so much, and then he just can't break out. <laughs> yeah. No, he has, again, he has a very good base kit, but not a team, not a not a place to play. I guess it's something similar to Kazuha, but Kazuha doesn't have such a good base kit compared mm -hmm. to him. Yeah, most definitely. I think it's actually interesting that you mentioned, because uh, this is a bit I was actually reading earlier, uh, that Tartaglia is like, you know, he's a Hydro-based NA character, and that means... Uh, you know, he doesn't really have a decent amount of partners because Yoimi and Beidou are slower. And it's funny because yeah. look who's right above him, Ayato, who's also suffering. <laughs> well, it'd be like that. I believe Tertalia might be better than Ayato, mm -hmm. but I think Ayato has a place in the Kaya, Ayato, and um, Barbara deck. Mm -hmm. It is a stall deck, so stall means players will rate them worse. Because yeah, they don't have true. good experience with stall or just don't enjoy it in general. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate. But yeah, right now Ayato is definitely better than Tartalia in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. But man, I'm looking at um, some good old friends over here. Magu, oh, Kenki, no. and Yoimiya. 34th and 44th. The beasts of 3.3. How the mighty have fallen. Yeah, imagine being literally SS, triple S tier. Freaking Meta Knight out here. And now you're 44th place, this guy. <laughs> Oh lord, Magu Kenki went from best in the game in five patches to bottom five. Mm -hmm. like, that is unfortunate. Yeah, it really is unfortunate. <laughs> do you know what's funny? I feel like I, is, do you think that this rating is also kind of unfair too? Like based on the based on the results? For Magu Kenki, I don't think so. No, he really is just not what he was before. Mm -hmm. I think I think <laughs> compared to Beidou, Amber. And Amber, I think this is a fair rating for him. He he might actually just be worse than. Mm -hmm. Is there is there any deck where you want to play him? Or I you just really wanna, I don't want to play any other Nemo character. Honestly, you're right. Like, cause I I think of the two Kenki uh, Kenki lists I like the most in the modern day, which is a uh, uh, Matt Mario's uh, uh, oh. Kenki <laughs> Kenki Kenki Electro. I like that one a lot. Yeah, it's yeah, super yeah. fun. And then there's also just like good old reliable Geo Kenki, but I I'm not realizing that with the existence oh. of <laughs> with the existence of Bin and NEC, you're just kind of cooked. <laughs> there, besides having fun with maybe that Kenki Super Conduct deck, mm -hmm. he does not have a place really. He does mm -hmm. not have a proper deck. Besides memes, he really does not have a proper place. I think this is a fair rating for him. Maybe for Yemi as well. Mm -hmm. Yamiya has recently found, I believe, some okay places. I've yeah. even seen some Ayamiya being played. Yeah, Ayamiya got resurrected. <laughs> Which I think is okay. I think it's a healthy Ayamiya as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, um... Is Yamiya this low though? Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe. Cool. maybe she is, because maybe we'll just do have that many characters that are better than her. Yeah. I feel like they are fairly rated, yeah. Yeah, no, pretty much. 
Uh, you know what is the most interesting? I think I think someone who might uh, stick out as a sore thumb here, uh, who's also Pyro. Uh, hey, Mr. D. Luke. <laughs> so, at this point, if you came in the server and asked who is the worst character, a lot of people would tell you D. Luke. Mm -hmm. So why in uh, whose name do we say it? Why in Prince's name? In our cat's name is Dilik all the way up here and not top, a top five, uh, sorry, bottom five, bottom ten. Well, what is he doing up here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, what is Barbara doing in the same rating as him? Yeah, what is, um, yeah why is Barbara right literally the same percentage as him? That's nuts. <laughs> I get it that people might not like Barbara because she just in, wants to stall. Any deck that you put her in, she stalls. Mm -hmm. She's efficient at it. And I guess as far as solo character goes, she's not that great, right? If she's on her own, she yeah, just she's loses. Picked. But I don't think it's fair to put Barbara and Dilik at the same rating. Yeah, most at all. definitely not. Not Dilik above Emiya. I'll say it. Mm -hmm. Not above Emiya ever. Here's some um, some interesting things I think about Dilik number one. Uh, it's it's funny because, and I think this is a thing we're gonna talk about a lot during uh, reading all of this. Is that there is a lot of cards who, since they started out so bad and have been buffed since then, like Beto, she was buffed in this patch of 3.8. Uh, people, you know, people aren't willing to experiment because they're so scarred from the original, right? And I think D. Luke uh, here yeah. is the opposite. He is the first card you get, right? As it's called standard banner privilege, but he has had no <laughs> changes, right? Since the start of the game. And though, like, not him not having any changes because he kind of, he kind of, he kind of sucks. <laughs> I mean, what are they going to change? I'll be honest with him. That's I true. think Diluc is the perfect example of a good starter card mm -hmm. that should just not be changed whatsoever. He He's kind of doomed to be bad competitively, mm -hmm. but I think he's like the perfect starter card. He's just someone that does a lot of damage. Yeah, just straight true. up. Like our starter cards were in the first deck where Diluc, Kaya and Fischl. We're going to see later. Fischl, uh, I think Fischl might be. A bit better. Yeah, just, just <laughs> a, a bit better just than the bit. other two. <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, don't forget, of course, Sucrose I, is also the uh, yeah. starter card. Sucrose was given literally after the first duel as well. I mm -hmm. feel those three cards are way better than Diluc, but also, at least Sucrose and Kai are more complicated, which means they are gonna work a lot more efficiently competitively. Yeah. Cool. I'm looking. I'm uh, talking about electro characters. Um. Mm -hmm. There is a specific Electro character I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, uh, you're not talking about Sara, are you? <laughs> no, Sara I think is either perfectly placed or maybe a bit lower, a bit higher. I don't know. I think she's perfectly placed, Sara. Mm. Whatever. We don't care. We don't care about Sara. We're not talking about Sara right here. Matt Mario is going to. Matt Mario is going to tell you to keep one eye open tonight. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> No, what do I- Okay, I, I apologize. Sorry, hey, stop one. TC is anyway. coming for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mika's low. Yeah, she's um, very low, which is shocking. I absolutely and utterly completely disagree with this. What mm -hmm. is this atrocious ranking for her? Yeah, Let's take her all the, way the two instances that people would rate. Mm -hmm. Right? She, she can be rated in two instances. Either as a solo character or in teams. As far as teams go, she can work with Electro Charge and Quicken. That's already a bit more variance than other characters we're seeing right here. Mm -hmm. And she performs well in both, those, both of those teams. Yep. I have tried them. She works. Then as far as the character goes, she's not bad. She's not bad at all. You put out double elemental skill, you do damage before the end of turn. If you mm -hmm. have another summon, I don't know, in Quicken, let's say Tignari summon or Kole, right? Yeah, Tignari or Kole. You do the Quicken summons. and then you proc the Eye summon again. Like, that's very good. And yep. then her burst is a lot of damage for nothing, honestly. Like, you can just do double elemental skill with her, cook for a few turns. Then, when you have one turn left of her summon, you just do burst with her and you're cooking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I'd to establish, like, you know, at base, her burst dealing four damage, and she's usually paired with Dendro, so it'll be five. And then you know, yeah, when the revenge, and then you can do another instance that's three, possibly four. Yep. that's like nine damage from a low cost burst. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a very interesting. Uh, you know, it was a, it was not the burst that I expected for Miko to get when she was introduced in three point seven, but it's one of those like you know, 
things that actually actively changes the game very similar to Klee Burst. Yeah? Yeah, no, her burst is very good. You know, I think, once again, it's the case of... Since Miko, her whole thing is that she can stack her summons, people are not willing to understand that, so then they just never try her. Because they're like, okay, well, here's Fischl. She's an Electro Summon. She's hit, she lasts her enough time for me yeah. to win. Uh, I don't need to learn Fischl about summon is, stacking mechanics. Uh, yeah, yeah. I will say Fischl is simpler, but better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess that's also a fault of this very low ranking. Mm -hmm. I think someone who's, Man. um, someone we could go into a little more depth as well is, uh, Barbara being so low, because, I mean, we did mention that she was similar to Diluc, but also just in general, I mean, like, she's sitting in the number one meta deck right now being Bin. Uh, despite that, she is sitting, uh, all the way at 31st place. <laughs> I will understand it if this is truly only individual ranking. Individually, yes, she's a very bad character, just by herself. Mm -hmm. But she has decks where she's very efficient and helps. Also her cleanse in quotes, right? If you play your elemental skill properly, you can cleanse most elements off you. If not all. I, mm -hmm. If I'm not wrong, I think you can cleanse all, but you'd rather not cleanse Dendro, because that just gives a bloom anyway. Yeah. But anyways, that's just very useful in general. Mm -hmm. I think the, you know, like, yeah, like, you know, you broke down part of the kit. Also her being able to apply Hydro on cast. Is, uh, is Kakomi here? Uh, she's maybe she's on the next one. Yeah, Kako wait, Kakomi's higher than Barbara. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> I, okay, you know what? I agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, on, at an individual level, I completely agree. Mm -hmm. As far as decks go, Barbara cl clears. But well, Dilux is up here, so <laughs> I don't know what the community is cooking. <laughs> I don't know what they're cooking. But yeah, it's, it is interesting. I think like one of the points we were talking about uh, you know, on our own time was that it's Barbara is it's maybe slightly carried by the fact that she really fits really well into bin slash stall decks and people just like, you know, like outside, you know, if since it's an individual ranking outside of that, like where, where does she go? <laughs> the, the pestilence tier. Yeah, yeah no, it, I think if we talk individual cards, maybe she is the worst in the game, mm -hmm. maybe because she just if it's a 1v1 versus anybody. She has no damage. She does one damage both on skill and on normal, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's it. But she... Be it's because she doesn't do damage, but has utility. That's just play. <laughs> mm -hmm. That utility... It, like, ultimately, that utility value is very strong, and I can't wait to uh, see yeah. them add more characters who can cleanse, because, you know, even, like, you know, I, like, I bullied Kakomi a little bit, but, like, her ability to on-demand uh, cleanse is very strong, so... You can be your aura yeah. magnet. Yeah, no, definitely. I think, uh, I Man, think we... this uh, this was quite the introduction to this character rank, and I uh, I want to see what's up next. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I feel so bad. I feel so bad for Amber. It's okay. You'll get your chance. They just they don't understand. Uh, okay. All right. They drew, no. They truly don't. They don't play her enough. People do not play this game enough to rate her so badly. Mm -hmm. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, anyway, uh, moving on, I think, let me count here. If I, I, I don't know, I'm a teacher teacher, I don't know the math. Uh, I think we're going to be moving on to 30, 30th through 11th place. Is that correct? I, If it's the same structure, it should be, yes. Yeah, probably. All right, let's take a look. You know, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I feel like, for the most part, these cards are ranked well in here. I think, I think actually, these looking are good at it, Ito doesn't seem that bad. It's just with the tier list, since he's in Beast here and the flyers off our dopamine lasers. <laughs> Man, I would not give Ito a 6. Ito is definitely like a 9 to me. Because even if we look at him only individually, mm -hmm. he can... Co I'm gonna say it right here, right now. I got <laughs> right here, right top now, 16. <laughs> Yes, Emerge. I will emerge with my <laughs> anger. I got top 16 when Ito released, all the way back in 3.5. Yeah. I got top 16 in Tavern using Ito, Fischl, and Sino. Mm -hmm. And I got fucking top 16. Let's go. So, it, Ito was the carry there. Like, I don't know why he's all the way down here, and only with a 6 rating, he's doing way better. Yeah, I, He's doing way better. I think one of the things we should point out is our resident Peter brand, Kali. Uh, Kali. Oh boy. Kali, um, Kali being 11th is crazy. <laughs> honestly, despite the the nerf all the way back in 3.4 to Sidewinder, mm -hmm. she's still doing very well. 
I think I think it's yeah. not a surprise that she can do well enough because um losing a talent card is not is isn't as bad as losing your entire kit right because she still yeah does, no i get it yeah she still does yeah. what she's meant to do you know like she this three uses a good old standard skill spam character do three damage the burst summons something it's pretty nice <laughs> despite despite dictionary being a more recent card than her and i see him being played more often in quick index than her Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think she deserves the spot. No, she's definitely still a very good card. I think it might also help that Kale is easier to understand and Tegnari, a lot of a lot of the skill check that players yeah. face is they don't know how to do charge shots. Oh, is that why they are so mad at Ito because they don't understand his super light of strength? Probably. She like, have you, we have a lot of tournament footage of people like uh, clicking normal attack on Tegnari mm -hmm. and then like, and then no, no um, Buster Bloom arrow comes out and they're like, ah. <laughs> well, guess what? You just have to have an uh, even even number of dice. Mm -hmm. indeed, indeed. Buddy, you look at the number. If the number is 2, 4, 6, or 8, you're good to go. If not, make it be 2, 4, 6, or 8. Good lord. <laughs> I think it's neat. Uh, Zingcho kind of oh holds out in his spot. You know, just by like it losing, losing all a good majority oh. of his partners, too. <laughs> Oof, what the hell? Sing to in 17th after the nerfs? Mm -hmm. Oof. Oof, I guess. Okay, we can see Ayaka right below him. Yeah. I'm gonna guess it's due to people having still good experiences with him. You can still OTK with Sino and Sing to. It's mm -hmm. possible. It's harder, but you can still do it. Sing to and Ayaka is a very annoying combo. It is. Absolutely. Um... But I do think there are some other characters that are below him that deserve a higher rating. Mm, which one? Uh, out of this list that we have here? Out of this specific list, I would even say I like probably Yola better. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yola has, since her buffs, uh, like th her buffs here in 3.8, since this is a 3.8 list, Yeah. I have been liking Yola better, a lot better. And yeah, these ratings are pretty low. It's it's true. Oof. I think I think with how poorly rele Eula released in her state, you know, with pre nerf send yeah. off, uh, what else? Like you know, her having horrendous damage output and like super duper backloaded. Like, I think it definitely uh, hurt her. Like you know, people willing to try definitely. her out because she's just so strange. And now that she has reasonable uh, reasonable buffs, like she's stronger now. But then people are just like, Ugh, yeah, I don't want to try it. <laughs> Oh, Yola. Yeah, no, no. The Yola is definitely stronger, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Kai is another contender that I would put out over Sing to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kai, Kai is a little he harder has, to work uh, because of swap stringency, but he, he can definitely That is, it. That is indeed it. Yeah. Uh, most Kai decks look to freeze in some way. He's more of a stall character, I feel like, mm -hmm. at this point. And I guess people don't appreciate stall characters as much. No, they don't. When you have to contend with the iron wall known as known as Ito, it's really hard to yeah. <laughs> play solid. I like, guess some people just hate <laughs> voted him. <laughs> it's like you know, like you can oh, freeze boy. you can freeze Ito and then he gets unfrozen and then he whacks you over the head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's still Ito's worst nightmares are freeze decks, but would you guess what? I played Vin a lot in order mm -hmm. to be able to test it and uh I can still deal with freeze decks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice, nice. Even right. in bad match matchups, he can deal more, like, better than other decks. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, yeah, that concludes the uh, top 30 through 11th, so uh, moving on to the top 10. Oh, boy, I, I, I could only imagine what we are going to see here. <laughs> Let's do Ooh. it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I think... There were no other character cards to be here. Yeah, no. These were the other character cards. I think at a glance, like, this is, um, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense. Also, you will mention, uh, we're going to go through this section specifically a little faster because uh, the tier list does reflect these cards in their own tier. So, you know, it's more fair. With the other ones, uh, like the, you know, the 51 rankings, uh, those are those are important to kind of be separate uh, to see the individuality. But yeah, uh, here, how about we do this? Uh, you can just kind of, we'll pass back and forth. Do you want to start? I can start Kaching and then you can go Sucrose. You can do odds, I can do Sounds evens. good. Sounds good, because I would like to talk about official, yes. Yeah, sure. All right, so uh, at number 10, we have Kaching. Uh, Kaching, very simple, versatile card. You know, uh, her ability to fast swap 
is super strong. I think it's interesting that people rate her pretty high because realistically, you know, within the meta of 3.8, uh, the only thing really she really has was Pyro Kaching, uh, which, you know, that's a deck that's definitely strong, but it's kind of kind of lost uh, lost a little bit of interest over time. Um, but yeah, it's I think overall she's just like she's reliable despite having a mostly niche. Uh, if you let's uh, move on to the next one though. So Crows, uh, as we can see, there's no other Animo character in here. She's definitely the best Animo character. She, as far as an Animo character, just does it all. Mm -hmm. She has good damage, decent to good damage. She can buff damage for herself, for her allies, and well, Animo's whole thing is Swirl, and she can do it really well, mm -hmm. even on normals. Yeah. That's it, she, she just does it all that an Animo character would like. Absolutely, yeah, you know, even even Venti couldn't surpass her, which is crazy. Uh, jumping, over yeah. to, jumping over the Klee, uh, <laughs> this, this card, my goodness, no changes ever since. Uh, no changes ever since her introduction in 3.5. It was so polarizing, right? You have Beto sitting at the bottom of tiers and then Klee yeah. just being way too strong. Uh, Klee definitely got a jump with Covenant of Rock. Absolutely. Even as far as individual play, but that Covenant of Rock? Oh boy, yeah. Uh, yeah Klee, I think Klee deserves a spot. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is good. Yeah, just doing, you know, good, good. There's an, over, an overtune of damage, ridiculous pyro application, free three attacks it's it's something uh everyone also the mm -hmm. the first character to introduce punching yourself as a mechanic yeah pretty <laughs> because much because of her burst such a strong thing moving on to another pyro and then, monster and then yeah right above her we have yet another another character that's pyro and from monster it's a character that a lot of people would say he's the best character in the game due to his talent card bennett mm -hmm. I feel like with how the meta has been changing and how it has become, Bennett is not as strong as he was before. Mm -hmm. Bennett has gone down a bit, but even then, he's looking very good. I think this is a very good ranking. Maybe I would put him below Klee at this point, but I don't mind it. Yeah. And his score is, considering that even top one has a score of barely eight, mm -hmm. I think that score that he's got is. Yeah, pretty fair. Yeah. I think I think the fact that like a lot of the time with when Bennett is played, that regardless of who you who you're playing in the team, they every single character becomes a threat is really scary. Yeah. Like you yeah, no. you have you uh, have no you have no like you have no fallback. Like you you will take five damage from this guy per hit. <laughs> yeah, and really the only thing that holds him back is his the fact that you kinda have to draw his hand card to unlock the beast. Mm-hmm inside of everybody on team but that's it yeah absolutely. let's uh let's go to the next one yeah sure uh, a big a big card <laughs> for oh, sure oh boy rodea still holding their own the, you know you know i mean and the, her partner in crime is right next to her we'll get to that later but um <laughs> my goodness the ever so traumatizing mmec uh enabler oceanid is sitting here at sixth place and it's it's crazy that she didn't get nerfed this whole time <laughs> oh yeah i heard people were asking for a nerf like remove her five cost kill which is insane to me mm -hmm. since she has three different summons to be fair yeah or a nerf that's like add more summons to her which you know what that sounds fun <laughs> mm -hmm. it does sound a little fun i'm surprised though that, like it's it's really neat that like the devs can recognize it's like okay like this card is a mega issue right like tier zero triple s and they were able to kind of progress the meta in 3.7 by literally just taking one damage off Mirror Maiden, boom, deck's dead. And uh, she found a new place with our next card, Oh Nakita. yes. <laughs> Coming in 3.7, I believe a lot of people did not have faith in Nakita. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people actually consider her the worst Archon in the out of the four, right? In the first few weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were, but they I have were been just a believer. too confused. <laughs> they didn't understand. I have been a believer. Since reading her talent card, I was like, Yo, wait, Nakita is just made for rainbow decks. You just want a lot of reactions? Just put her in rainbow. Mm -hmm. Look and behold, NEC. NEC. Whether it's with Rodea and Fischl, or it's, it's with Mona and Fischl, or Mona and Yaimiko, Nakita is played in EC decks, or rainbow decks. Mm -hmm. She's great. She's yeah, really I, great. I think people didn't realize how incredibly valuable 
uh, the Seed of Skunkta skill is, you know, three or five regardless of once you apply it to the other team, that timer is ticking for how long they have to live. <laughs> yeah. Uh, rolling, Man, rolling. talking about value, mm -hmm. uh, we got another high value character. Oh boy! Right above her. I. It's crazy that she. It's crazy that like, she's this strong, you know. Despite like, it's like, oh, she only. She's only gonna work in like cryo and cryo and swirl. She can't be that good. Well, <laughs> well, well, well. Oh my boy! Friend. I. I think we really just under underestimated her burst because mm -hmm. her burst does also buff physical damage. Yep. Which means that any character that can do a normal will do more damage. Yeah, and if absolutely. we think about what we said earlier, Mirror Maiden had been nerfed for one damage and suddenly she's between the worst characters in the game. Mm -hmm. From being at the top to the bottom, just like that, from one damage. Mm -hmm, yeah. Shenha gives plus one damage to a lot of characters. Yup. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's just a lot of value. I think the scariest thing is that in the future, when if we get more characters who individually boost elements, and you know, you can do like, let's say, like there's a Pyro Shenha. Oh, God. <laughs> That'd be terrible. I don't want to imagine it. I don't want to imagine it. I pretend not to see it. Uh, now we're moving <laughs> on to the top three, and this is very interesting. Why don't you take away Ever Favoristologist? <laughs> oh, man. Mona. I believe she will always have. A spot in the top rankings mm -hmm. in DCG because of her passive. What yep. makes her so good compared to so many other characters, literally she's top three, yep. is the fact that she can fast swap once per turn. This is very good considering that we have this thing called it's better to pass, right? Just mm -hmm. pass your turn. Yep. It can work very efficiently because you can get priority. And guess what Mona can help you with getting as well? Priority. priority fast swaps it's free fast swaps it's it's really insane just how good that free fast swap once per turn can be mm -hmm. to make her so good yeah, but then do. that doesn't stop there mm -hmm. her burst we talked about how valuable just boosting damage is yep her burst can double your damage if you ever get it off mm -hmm. which uh in some clutch scenarios would you look at that uh, an additional five or six damage is good. <laughs> yeah, I think overall, like, you know, since Mona is able to really, you know, she's able to really take control of the match, you know, swap to the character you need to tank, you know, swap to her to tank, and then her end game. Of course, we don't always see burst, but like, once you once she bursts, you're kind of in a lockout situation. You're screwed. Like, one yeah. of your characters is cooked. <laughs> yeah, no, you have to choose somebody to sacrifice. If you ever let her get her burst off, Unless she's the last character standing, because at that point, yeah, she does not do damage. Mm -hmm. But if she has any other character, even something like, I don't know, Sucrose, right? Yeah. Uh, Sucrose does three damage on skill. That becomes six at the bare minimum. If we think you're going to have other stuff like Tendori, that's another four, because it also doubles. Like, Mona Bird works like this. Any damage is calculated before the doubling. So if you have reactions or foods that can boost your damage, it gets doubled, all of that. It's and insane. Dory, Agent Dive Bomb. Adept is Agent Dive Bomb. Oh, oh boy. Set 20 damage, yeah. die. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely very good. And uh, to, to wrap up the 3.7 characters that came in and shook up the meta, yeah. the one character people in the first week said is the best character in the game ever, and well, lo Raiden behold. Shogun. Yup, it's the Raiden Shogun. Uh, shout outs to Electro taking three spots in the top 10. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pyro wasn't so far off behind. Neither yeah, was no. Hydro. Definitely, that's true. Uh, but oh man, Raiden Shogun. Uh, no changes from uh, 3.7. Obviously, I don't think she should. It's a little too early to do that. But the ultimate enabler. And, you know, I think, you know, especially because it's a community source tier list, um, the probably one of the most fun cards for people to play because pop yeah. that burst your character's two energy it's a good time <laughs> i'll be honest i think she might be overrated here i think mm -hmm. she's maybe top 10 i don't know if she's actually the second best card in the game yeah that's just my personal opinion because mm -hmm. i did play with her and test her out absolutely but it's definitely also people being biased as far as the character itself goes not just how it plays in cg because mm -hmm. You know, Raiden might just be the most popular character in Genshin. <laughs> yeah, she's she's incredibly popular. I mean, I and think, I'll say she's fun. She is fun. It is fun. <laughs> it's very fun. I think it's 
I think it's fine for community sourced. I think I think she definitely I mean, making her making sure she stayed in the top ten was definitely key because yeah. of like right now present meta three point eight. Oh man, I love Shenha EC. Don't you love it when half the tournament <laughs> is a fifty percent pick rate? Ah. Oh boy. But yeah, I, I even though I do say she might be a bit overrated, she's definitely not overrated as, as Dilek was to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be almost not bottom 20, good lord. Yeah. But she's yeah. very good. She's very good. She deserves the spot in the top 10 for sure. Yeah. Oh man, and who is the winner of our 3.8 tier list? Oh man. Is the perfect it, character. Mm -hmm. It is the perfect character. Our starter our Fischl. starter reward official. Official is the magnum opus of mm -hmm. TCG, as we have it so far. Yep. Official is the perfect designed character. A character that is simply versatile everywhere, and if you change anything about her kit, it's just over. You either buff her and she's just like way above everyone else, or you either nerf her in anything and she's just dead. Yep. Literally the only nerf I could ever see is them saying oh official now does three uh, what would like i don't know three electro damage and the uh, two piercing instead yeah three uh, three on base is like three on base first damage is the most realistic nerf i could think of but that's it she's actually just the perfect design character mm -hmm. she fits everywhere yeah that's it yeah. oz is too good he's too good bro <laughs> it's just like the real game she's just too good man <laughs> true true I truly do think they nailed Fischl perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's also it's it's just so nice that she's the character you come out with with the tutorial and like yeah she she's yeah. she can just hold she can hold out the test time the devs you can't touch her and then in the regular you know in the regular game you can't touch her she's just too good. <laughs> I think just like Diluc, she's the perfect starter uh, deck character, mm -hmm. but in another sense where she's like a very easy to understand character, right? Mm -hmm. The base is very easy to understand, but then you think about combos with her and what you can actually do with her and the decks you can put her in. Yeah. And it just becomes a lot more not complicated, but how do I see this? Mm, pause. Mm -hmm. No. What? Oh man. Uh, not deep. What? What word am I looking for? Complex. Not complex. <laughs> Nuanced? Nuanced? Maybe. Maybe it is nuanced. I'll try it. Right, let's go back to recording. No, we're still recording. Official... Oh, hmm? We're still going. Go. Oh, yeah. So, I believe she's still, like, just like Dilek, the perfect starter character, but not like him. He's the perfect starter character where it's like, oh, he's good early, he's easy to understand, but then competitively he's not as good. But Fischl... It's good early. She has a basic kit, but then she can combo very well. Mm -hmm. She has some intense intense and complex combos. She's a very nuanced character. Yeah. I love her. She's she's perfect the way she is right now. The, just like the you know, like the gay she should get she should get for being number one, she should get her like skin from uh <laughs> she should you get know, her. That'd I'm be down. Dope. That'd I'm be down. so dope. You know what? Yeah, no, give me uh Give me her princess skin in TCG for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think um, yeah, that's the that's the top ten, and I think it's relatively accurate. Let's move on to the proper tier list. You know, we said we would go. We went through. We went uh, pretty quick through the top ten, uh, but it's very interesting to see how they actually get split up between the tiers. Uh, are you ready, reps? I don't know. <laughs> I I don't think I would ever be ready for what we're about to witness <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's get to it here we go oh my goodness oh um uh, my eyes are burning <laughs> oh god oh what, goodness. what did the community cook uh, oh no okay, I, okay, need okay, okay. I need some bleach in let's... that oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god okay. all right let's chill yeah. Overall, it's not the, the worst list, but there's definitely some outliers in here. Yeah, we are we are mostly Man. joking about we are mostly joking. The tier list is actually relatively relatively okay. I think um, where do we want to go? I think we'll I think we'll try to check off uh, the spots that we agree with, right? So I think because uh, we reviewed it earlier, S tier is definitely I think yeah. it's reasonable. Yeah, maybe move Ito up there. Um. <laughs> yeah, Ito definitely needs to be up there. A tier. 
Uh, got a kick out. Kale, Zhongli, Ganyu. We'll, we'll talk about those more later. We didn't actually get to talk about yeah. them too much. Um, B tier. Again, we're moving to go off. I think we can move Agent to A, you know. A stands for Agent. A yeah, stands for Agent, <laughs> true, but also he's that good. Yeah, I, I think that's about it for for B tier, yeah? No, yeah. this this looks fine. Maybe... You know, wait, maybe you can move that. No, Shangyan is fine in B tier. Really? He's I'm really surprised. carried by his decks, I feel like. He's a good character, but the fact that his decks are meta, I don't know if it's his worth, you know? That's fair. Uh, dropping his but uh, we can move down some other characters, you know, like Kazuha. <laughs> True. Get out of here. <laughs> we can move down Kazuha, Hutao. Hutao. <laughs> Man, I wish Hutao was a bit better, but oh well. And Venti. It'd be like that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving to C tier, uh, who else do we not really agree with their placements? Just at a glance. Barbara. Oh, yeah. Barbara, I feel like she's just B. Yeah. She, she, her utility is very good. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Miko for sure. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think we can make case for Blaua Churl to go up to B. You know, he has decent decks with both Ito and um, Zhongli. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Blaua Churl actually uh, is decent. It's. Hard, it's hard for people to understand Lava Trail because of, you know, the 8 HP pool. They're like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. instantly die. <laughs> I think Lava Trail maybe can be moved up. I don't know. Hmm. And then we go to D tier. Other than... <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. We missed somebody from C tier. Wait oh, a minute. Who did we miss? Who miss? Dilek. Dilek uh, needs oh, to yeah. go all the way down to D. Join them in the... For sure. Join them in the abyss. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I don't know. Do you think Razor needs to move up? Cause he's oh ah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would move him to C at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He at least gets to C. You know, like he's not playing as much, but he's still he's still good. Yeah. Uh, most of these D characters deserve to be there. I feel like we can just move up Razor, Beto, Hum. Mm -hmm. Beto is a C tier character. Yep. Uh, and Amber is l either at the bottom of C or the top of D, but that's it, I think. Yeah, no, that's definitely true. Other so, than that, the rankings are actually fine. Yeah. Yeah. Good for anyway. I think let's talk about some of the outliers that we mentioned. Um, you know, I think, and I think also part of it, something we'll talk about later, is that sometimes people just don't, or they're just not willing to try characters out and then realize uh, how yeah. strong they are. I think the place I'd really want to hone in on, because I think we've done... I think there's enough to be said about uh, Miko and Barbara. It's more specifically, uh, I think this squad, this squad right here, Ito, Chonyun, Agent, Noel, uh, those are characters we want to talk about because we didn't get to see oh, too definitely. much of Man, I feel like people are not trying Ito as much because either he's played in stall decks mostly, it's, you know, <laughs> easy to set him up and then have him go ham or just. People hate him because he's meta. Mm -hmm. And it's... I don't think enough people give him a try. That's yeah. it. It's interesting because, you know, like this uh, this was taken during 3.8. And even then, like you couldn't say like, oh, uh, Ito's rated this low because, you know, like it was early 3. Point, like or too early in 3.8. Bro, he was he yeah. was swinging out of the gates with Courtyard day one. He was a monster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's fine. Damn. Agent as well. Agent has been good since release. Yeah, absolutely. Like he, I think friends. he's always had a meta deck. Yep. I, first the meta was... decks that he's in changed, but he's always had something. Yeah. First it was like, you know, funny cooking in 3.3, you had burning agent, and then you had <laughs> we vaporize, yeah. and then just any yeah, yeah, yeah. any deck that's pyro synergy and he can dive bomb in well, like he's good, man. <laughs> yeah, and now Agent E C. Oh yeah, Agent Still EC. Good. Like, he's always had a meta deck, that's it. You know, I think Noelle's Man. here because people are traumatized. Maybe. But also, <laughs> Noelle is good in her own right. Yeah. I, <laughs> funnily enough, people were discussing when Ito released. Oh, is Ito even better than Noelle? Mm -hmm. Like, Noelle's already yes, so what? strong. I just put on, <laughs> I put on Lucky Dogs and WGS, she's a monster. <laughs> Dude, guess what? You can put what you put on Ito on Noel, and she works almost as good. That's yep. insane. <laughs> Do you think Noel should move up to A tier though? Because like, like Ito obviously moves. I'm to really S. thinking, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, no, Ito does move up to us. Considering the fact that we're moving Zhongli down, 
Mm -hmm. We're gonna say soon enough why. I think we could say Noel is A tier. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. But yeah, Zhongli, um... Zhongli... One of the reasons why he's up there is... People, because they don't try Ito, they, they would rather try Zhongli. I don't blame them. Yeah. Zhongli still has his nice Geocean attack where it's the same premise. You stall until you buff him up with artifact and the weapon, and then he goes ham. Yeah, Not as ham more, as Ito does. Even more though. enhanced with Courtyard in 3.8. Yeah, and, and his burst is very good. The Petrify is insane. Yeah, Petrify lockouts are so crazy, especially in a 1v1, because Zhongli just stops you completely. Like, yeah. you know, it's like the ability to. Like, you know, like it's like freeze, like the ability to completely. It's stop freeze, anyone. but without reactions. Yeah, freeze without <laughs> reactions. It's scary. It's, it's very good, man. Yeah, it's too bad that, like, you know, I, like a double G. He's overshadowed. Yeah, double He's G. He's overshadowed. Just, like, totally eclipses him. <laughs> At this point, he's overshadowed by both Ito and Noah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, who else did we want to take down? Kale, I think we've talked. Uh, we can, you know, I think it's just a little more. I don't know. What about Kale? Got you. Got you. True. Got you. She's okay. She's very good, even. She's not this good. Mm -hmm. You know what I think it what? is? You know what? You know what? Uh, like Go newer on. players yes. love to try. Yeah. Amos okay. Ganyu. <laughs> I was gonna say Amos Ganyu is surprisingly very good because mm -hmm. it does fix the thing where, oh man, I'm doing so much AOE. He he he. Oh yeah. All right. I have this one character, Ito or Zhongli, which I can just sustain. They're the last standing. Is your Ganyu getting through? No. Well, too bad, you lost. Mm -hmm. Right? Amos both fixes that, because you just do way more damage with Amos. I think I've seen somebody do like 8 damage on the main target with Amos Bow on the 5 cost skill. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think I think that's what that's what's ultimately bolstering her rings, because after like in, com in competitive, like after her nerfs in 3.6, uh, she's, you know, she kind of fell out of favor. Uh, you know, I know currently, uh, you know, in players in CN region, uh, they are try they are doing a lot of Ganyu stuff, but uh, overall, yeah. she has she really hasn't been popping up otherwise, and it's understandable because Amos is a hard card to run. It's expensive, <laughs> even with like Courtyard and all your other weapon shenanigans, it's just too much. I mean, you know what? Uh, I did say this earlier, but Ganyu is a popular character that might have boosted her rating here. Just saying. That's true. That's fair. <laughs> Uh, who else? I think that's all, like, the tier list movements, you know, um, I think S tier is definitely very fair, like, yeah. you know, A tier is pretty alright, B tier definitely needs some movement. It, you're right, it might be just based on people not willing to play the card or just, like, popularity. Except for that, then you have, like, like Popularity definitely plays something. <laughs> I mean... Agent has just shown up in the meta since release. Mm -hmm. a people can see why Agent is strong and can rate him accordingly. Yeah. If we, uh, you know, if we, let's see, let's look at this actually. Um, if we were to take S through A T, a S through B tier, and with our adjustments, right? So, where did Miko move? Miko moved to B tier. Uh, Barbara yeah. moves at least to A tier, or maybe B tier. For I think Barbara goes to B. Yeah, yeah no, I think Barbara. Barbara goes to B. Yeah. Uh, who else? Uh, who gets demoted? Who targets demoted? Venti gets demoted. Uh, Kazuwa gets demoted. I, how, what, how many meta We can make a lot of meta decks out of just, like, even just these two tiers, right? Mm. Like, what let's, do we have? I, I, I'm, I'm actually gonna count. <laughs> yeah, let's look. So we got... So, if we, out of S tier, S tier alone, yeah. we can do... NEC. <laughs> yep. Official Mona Nahida or Ocean Invariant as well, which is funny. Yeah. We can almost do Shenhe and write an SC. It's mm -hmm. just missing Shang Yun, which yeah. I would move to A. Yep. Then I think Benny, Klee, and Mona can make a nice Vaporize deck. Yep. It's pretty much uh, Klee, Vic, uh, Klee Mona Vaporize, except that it is the auto. Yeah. Mode. Yeah, and you just actually just replaced Benny with Agent, it's still good. Yep. 
It's also close enough to do the good old Benny, Klee, and Cutting. Oh yeah, the freaking Overlord. Pyro Kick yeah. Mossad Edition. That, wait, I didn't even yeah, notice yeah. that. That's, that's, you're right. <laughs> If we look into A, uh, I guess you can almost do Shenhe with two Nemo. Mm -hmm. If you if you take Zhao from B, I, I don't think you can argue Sh Zhao going to A. I think he's perfect in B. Yeah, he definitely sticks to B. But if we look at like S, A, and B, you can make you can make Shenhe two Nemo, mm -hmm. even though it has fallen off. Yeah, yeah. Despite it falling off, it's. Alright, what about uh, Quicken variants? What Quicken options do we have out of the S through B tiers? I mean, if Nakida, Fischl, and uh, Kole, I guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe something with Tichnari and Fischl and, and Nakida or Kole. Or, um... I mean, you can go. Mm -hmm. You can go Tichnari, Kole, Fischl, Full Bow, Quicken Edition. Yeah. Is decent enough. You can even uh, specifically the weapon engine with uh, official yeah. Nahida and Tagnari. It's it's definitely it's a high roll deck. Don't get me wrong, but it's yeah, strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if it works, uh, you're gonna be impressed by the results. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Such a decent deck. What else do we have up here? I think yeah. Of course, infamous. Bar if Barbara moves up, Vin, <laughs> Vin, Vin's yeah. back in business. <laughs> definitely. I mean, you can do uh, Ayaka Freeze, no? Oh yeah, you could do with Zingcho uh, and Shenha. Yeah, Zingcho, Ayaka, Shenha, and like that's all you need. You can do Zhongli's Geoshnid as well. Yeah. But I think I think that goes to show you with how many um, characters we were able to pick from S tier and pair from A through B tier, and you know with some with some adjustments with our opinions, just how versatile S tier is. Like these guys are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Fischl is the queen of versatility, honestly. Mm -hmm. And the fact that... Uh, There's a reason why she's number one. <laughs> yeah, the fact that most of her uh, pairings in uh, NEC are literally in the tier and the same as her. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh, you heard it here, folks. NEC's tier one deck. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's, that's, the, that's the tier list. I think it's cool. And like, you know, like we joked earlier, like... You know, we, we make jokes and stuff, but like, this is actually like a pretty good tier list. Uh, you know, with yeah. just a few adjustments. You know what? I am proud of the community. Because mm -hmm. usually if you do a community tier list, you actually would see the... the stuff that's been left on the oven for too long. Yeah. But this one, even though it, it is a bit a little bit more salty than I would like... You did put a b bit more salt than I would like in my food. It is still a good list, and I'm honestly proud of the community this time around. The um, the next thing is uh, one of the other tier lists, which is a very interesting stat to look at, is how many people actually played these cards. And oh no, <laughs> I think I think I think um, you have some choice words to say here. <laughs> uh, look at that bottom. I don't know if I called it, but I maybe called it that. Um, People rate Ember low and so low because they do not play her. Nope. What I'm surprised is that people don't play Yai Miko. What mm -hmm. the? Yeah, no, definitely. Huh? Miko, Miko not being played, and like I think you know, I think it's because people wow. don't want to read. <laughs> but she's wow. too confusing okay. for them. <laughs> I I suppose. And guess uh, what? Beta is also not as played, mm -hmm. so people did not give her a second chance after the buffs. Yep. Man. 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 Mm -hmm. Who else is a? Uh... Dilik has played a share of his fair share. His start character, yeah. Yeah, Dilik. Ito. Dilek, Dilek, Dilek. It's not being played. Another uh, reading issue from the players for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised he's this low considering how strong the deck is. Like, even if even if you yeah. were participating in the community, you would run into this in matchmaking, and you would just cry. Oh, You're for just sure. Like, what just happened? <laughs> I just, I just got one, one turn killed sweep. This <laughs> BS. I mean, first time I, I went against it, I was playing Geoshnid mm -hmm. in matchmaking. I went against it and I was like, what is this trash deck? What are they cooking, man? Mm -hmm. And then three turns later, their Ito one turns my whole team. Just yeah. does 30 something damage in one turn. I was like, what the hell just happened? Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know, how many characters do you see in the S and A tier that would be based off, like, main game Genshin popularity, right? Because some, some of these are, like, monsters and stuff, and you're like, cool. 
I mean, as far as the monsters go, like, oh, she needs an agent. It's definitely just popularity as far as TCG goes, because everybody's like, oh my god, they're so good. So people mm -hmm. hear that, they're like, hmm, I must play them as well. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's also what other people hear. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, I, I guess I, I guess I, I'm trying to I erase MMEC in my brain. That's why <laughs> it's here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as popularity stuff goes from the normal Genshin community, I I still would say Raiden is more played. Yeah, for sure, Raiden is played a whole lot more because yeah. she's probably the most popular character in Genshin. I would say uh, Shenha. Not really. No, Shenha is not popular. Never mind. Scratch that. Yeah, she's like you know. I I've come to actually like her a lot better. I, I'm insane. I'm insane. I I'm I'm a person that likes Shenha a lot. I'm insane mm -hmm. for that. I forgot that. I'm insane for that. <laughs> I think the standout um, would be Kokomi. Kokomi is definitely a very yeah. popular character. Kokomi, Ayaka are definitely being played here because of popularity as well. Mm -hmm. I think Ayaka specifically supplemented by the Ayamiya in 3.3, and that was like. That mm -hmm. was the most amount of content um, the general content creators for Genshin made, and they were all talking about Ayamiya. It's just Ayamiya mirrors everywhere, and that's that might contribute to her being in this spot. You know what I'm I'm noticing actually? Yeah. Besides the Archons and just insane meta characters, the characters that are most played are the ones that were at the start of the game. Yeah, and I mean that makes sense, right? Because. That's when ever that's yeah. when everyone was just hardline playing the game, just going crazy. <laughs> yeah. And then people came back for 3.7 and 3.8. And I suppose they were seeing the Archons and saw and were like, oh, I should play the Archons. They must be good. Mm -hmm. So they're trying out the Archons board and other cards. I say that because I look at Hu Tao, she's all the way down in C as far as play rate goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's she's, Man, like, she's that's... number like almost number one. Uh, Genshin character in terms of popularity. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. She's competing with Raiden as far as popularity goes in normal game. Mm -hmm. Man, that that is interesting. That is interesting. I think, yeah, I think that's actually such a good point. Like, most of these cards are the original original 30. Or how many? I don't know how many we had. Like, original 20, 30 cards in the game. It, it was like 28 to 30, I believe, maybe. Yeah. Um... Then another one that I will say is boosted by popularity is Kazuha. Mm -hmm. We can see him in B. You wouldn't say that he's boosted, but if we look at the other new cars that released alongside him, Kandake yeah. and Yanfei, yep. they're almost almost at no no they are quite literally at the bottom. Mm -hmm, honestly, yeah. they're sitting top. And they are the, the newest cards. Yeah. And it was funny because uh, Kandake was the one who kind of came out on top in terms of the patch. Because Yanfei oh, is... Oh, definitely. Outsour outsourced I by mean... child. <laughs> oh, man. What can I say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that it's, it, it's really cool to see this statistic. I think obviously, like, you know, we were relying mostly on this, but looking at this is super cool because it kind of shows... They're not too different. Yeah it's, it, yeah, it's not too different, but it also shows, uh, you know, like, a lot of factors, like we already talked about, popularity in the main game, you know, like, are you... Oh, have you been so overpowered that people just immediately recognize you? Like, yeah. But yeah, that does it uh, kind of for the uh, tier list segment. Next, you know, let's actually look at some like more uh, more analytical data. Uh, you know, in terms of I think we have a uh, box and whisker plots uh, to take a look at. So I will mention, out of the interest of time, we are going to go through these a little quickly. Uh, you know, I do want to respect uh, Elvin, the creator of all this, of all this, uh, you know, clicking the data, etc. I do want to at least take a quick look at it, uh, you know, because it's this is all great stuff, and you know, you should check out the original Reddit post uh, to you know see it in more detail. But uh, this is the Blocks and Whisker Plots rankings for all of the uh, characters in their element category. And Rept, if you don't mind, uh, explain to our audience what is a Boss and Whisker Plot. Man, these are interesting for nerds like me. Uh, basically, the top of the box is the performance the character can output in which they perform the best, and the bottom is their worst. But then we see a line that's basically close enough to their average performance that we're gonna see. Mm -hmm. That's really it. Yep. And most interesting to me is most Nemo characters have a consistent enough performance. I suppose they, they vary on if they get swirls or not. But then we see Kazuha's box is pretty big compared to the others. If you've got the biggest That's box because... 
Yeah, that's because Kazuha depends on how you order your characters, uh, how you build your deck, what cards you draw. Most of the times you would put his talent if you really want to play him, because it's just more damage and it's good. Do you draw the talent, do you not? Do you properly swirl with him or not? Do you actually want to do a plunging attack when you go back to him? There's just so many things to think about with playing Kazuha. He, even if you look that his box is big, the average is still in the lower end of the box. Mm -hmm. Because his best output, his best performance, is not realistic. Yeah. It's, yeah you it's can see it. Mm -hmm. You can see it maybe 1 in 10 games, but that's it. I'll be honest. Yeah, a lot of that, like, rainbow deck building, which Kazuo seems oriented to, you know, of course you don't have any woven fallback, so you have to rely on your toss-ups or your pestis to kind of make it work. You know what? I, you know, how come nobody's made Kazuo double Inazuma for dice fixing? Um, that's because before 4.0, 4 we are looking at 3.8 right now. That's true. You're right. Because before 4.0, Inazuma Resonance was especially bad for... Kazuha. Oh, you're right! I didn't think about that. All right. It was only in the active character. Mm -hmm. I I think I even ranted about at some point how just how atrocious it was for Kazuha. Mm -hmm. But now, now maybe there's some hope. You know what? You gave me some hope. Yo, let me cook. <laughs> All right, I think uh, one more. Let Kojo cook. Cryo! Oh my. Man. Oh my. I'm already seeing two very interesting statistics <laughs> here. <laughs> I think, uh, um, do we want to start with the most polarizing character? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ganyu over here uh, has the largest box. And, I mean, with her, it's more cut and dry because she got that five cost skill. And what happens when you don't get the five cost, like five dice? You cry. Yeah, you cry. Much. <laughs> it's, There's it's... a cry in cryo. There's a cry and cry out. It's, it's a thing that has existed ever since 3.4 when Ganyu was finally able to peek out of her uh, peek out of her niche. Uh, you know, not being able to have five dice uh, and you not being able to do a charge shot, it kind of just messes you up completely. <laughs> yeah, and then as far as Yula goes, it depends on her burst. Yeah, I does. see that she, her average is lower, honestly. That is unfortunate. I believe that is what we call a skill issue on the player's part. True. <laughs> yeah, especially um, with the, that is just due to her burst. Yeah, especially with the uh, Eula. I mean, even like like you know pre nerd like you know pre pre buff Eula, but also uh, modern uh, three point eight Eula. Um, what you'll run into, what players will run into an issue, right? Like you just mentioned, uh, they'll burst, and then they'll have no extra attacks to increase the damage. So it, it just it just pelts you for like three. It's like oh no. It's so painful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's kind of all the talk about here. Shenha taking the top as as she as she does. Shenha just consistently being very good. If we look at it. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the next one. What's next? Dendro. We have four Dendro. How did we survive with four Dendro? Not well. Not oh, well. Man. Up until Nakida, we did not survive well. Yeah, it was painful. But man, uh, I. <laughs> I want to yes. look at the uh, Tichnari and Jade Plume because oh, yeah. they're. <laughs> oh boy. Tichnari, we're looking at him. He really just has one game plan yep. try to put out your summons from your charged attack shots, do some nice damage with your burst, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, his game plan is pretty uh, cut and dry, and especially when you don't skill issue and do like the charge attack wrong, it's pretty, it's pretty sad. Uh, yeah. It really does not depend on anything. Meanwhile, we look at Jade Plume. Yeah, the most... It depends on how you play around your vitality stacks. Mm -hmm. Just it, in a bad player's hand, Jade Plume will definitely go all the way down, as you can see in the score of like 4 to 3, right? Yeah. But then in a good player's hand who can manage their stacks properly, they output a 7 damage burst for as low a cost as 3 dice and 2 energy. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of good damage right there. Mm -hmm. You know what's... Um, I wonder I wonder if with the meta getting so fast is why Jade Plume has such a large box. Do you think like other decks, especially if they deal piercing, are messing up Jade Plume? 
Like, it causes, like, they take a milling piercing, mm. and then it causes... Uh, I don't think one. piercing affects vitality stacks, though. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. It's only elemental damage. Uh, yeah, if it's elemental damage if Jade Plume is active. I see. So, it is still... It also depends on how the opponent plays, right? Yeah. Because if the opponent wants to, they can mess you and your vitality stacks. Interesting. It really depends on if they help you or mess you. Most of the time, they mess you. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. <laughs> Uh, moving on from, I cannot believe there's only four dendro characters, man. Uh, moving on, what's next? We need more. Electro, wow, nine! <laughs> it's not That's fair. a bunch of characters. It's a, cru it's a cruel and unjust world here. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Th I think this is the highest level of, um, uh, you know, highest level of, like, data variance we have in between every turn. Oh boy. Um... <laughs> I think, I think we can pair two of them. We got Beto and Sino, who are very, uh, Similar I'll issues. talk about them because yeah. I love them. Go for it, bro. So their issues is that they want a longer game. Beto is basically, do you get a longer game where you can get your burst out and and normals? Because you do need to do some normals. Then it's great. You can win. It's not a strong enough win condition, but we did see Kokumi and Beto cook with that, and yeah, it works nice enough. And then Sino is unfortunately <laughs> he just needs his stacks. Mm -hmm. If he can get his stacks, if he can get to four or five stacks, he's gonna cook because his damage gets amplified by two. That's yeah. a lot. He can cook. But four stacks means round five, five stacks means round six. Mm -hmm. yeah. Unless you burst on like round three with him, but most of the times you want to set him up. So you're not gonna be on him and get his energy. That's why we also see, despite his box being bigger, his average is way lower. Yep. You yep. could say something similar uh, to the effect of Yaimiko and Sora. Uh, Yaimiko taking the lead in terms of, you know, her upper quartile range being much higher, and Sora being the opposite. Her low quartile range is super low. Um, I don't know. It's Nico was one of the characters, right, that we talked about that she does need to be rated a bit higher, but. Yeah. You know, like, I think, you know, with this statistic, it does show that, you know, but there are, there are a good amount of players who understand that, oh, she is actually better than what she seems to be, despite her overall ranking. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. It, on both of them, it's just skill issue from the players who don't understand how to play around either Miko's totems and the number of them, mm -hmm. and how to properly end your turn, because there is timing to that thanks to Miko's abilities. Or Sara's crow feathers and who to put them on and so on. Yeah, absolutely. Who do we have? Geo! Oh, 5 Geo. <laughs> Suffering like Dendro, man. Can you believe a Dendro Geo deck made, five, made, made top score? I mean... It's a pro moment. <laughs> fun fact, I believe we have more Dendro characters than Geo characters in the main game. Geo is just suffering everywhere. Yeah, it really does. Uh, this is uh, this is the one that I'd say with the least amount of um, uh, upper and inner uh, lower quartile ranges yeah. between each other. And as we can see, Ito's uh, ceiling is the highest for sure Yo. out of all of them. I suppose that his average is lower due to the fact that he's kind of reliant on if you draw the weapons and artifacts or not. Mm -hmm. and I that think, the uh... same thing applies to Zhang Li, definitely. I think even without that, part of the lower quartile range is definitely skill issue. Like, these two are so similar. Yeah. <laughs> like, the bottom yeah. lower is skill issue. Zhongli, uh, which one do I use? Three or five costs? Ito, how do I charge attack again? I don't remember. Man. But yeah, that's about it. Other than that, we can see the Geo characters are consistent. Yeah, they're super consistent. Who is next? I think it's... Hydro! Oh my god. <laughs> Man, another bunch of characters. All nine, and very similar <laughs> rankings as well. We got the two top tiers, the two doing all right tiers, and then the ah. <laughs> uh, how about I take Ayato and Tartaglia since yeah, they seem to be the NA based Hydro characters? Um, so for Tartaglia, there are so many factors that count besides his Hydro uh, normal attacks. It's the Riptide. Did you apply it? Did you not? If you did apply it, you have so much more damage you get access to. Which burst are you getting? Are, is the burst good for your situation? Like, 
there's so many things to talk about his kid because it's so complicated. Mm-hmm. Ah, I, I might, I might want to do a video in depth about him. Hmm, man, there's so much stuff to him. Really and then do. Ayato is similar. It's just that he does not have spot versatility as him. But for Ayato, I guess it depends. Is it really him doing the work? Are you getting his burst off to buff your normal attacks? Mm-hmm. If not, I guess he's just not as good. Yeah. But if you do, well, he can perform nice enough, just not to the level of other characters. Mm-hmm. I think uh, this is this is an interesting one to take a uh, the two the two resident hydro healer Kakomi and Barbara uh, having very similar stat spreads and uh, you know having this uh, you know like this very specific lower quotile range is much wider and. I, you know what that is? That's a, that's a, that's a certified skill issue moment. <laughs> uh, I definitely for the, sure. These are the two characters that have a learning curve because self-inflicting an element uh, opens up a significant amount of possibilities you don't really consider uh, when playing. And Barbara a lot, you know, people are like, oh, she self-inflicts Hydra, she's useless. But then you realize, like, you know, Barbara's cleanse is kind of stronger. You know, unless you're fighting yeah. a freeze matchup, she's really strong. <laughs> I mean, I think it's actually good in a freeze matchup. Really? Because if you do have cryo, yes, it can it can be good. I won't say it's definitely good no matter what. It can be good because if you do have cryo uh, on yourself mm-hmm. and you use Barbara's skill, at the end of turn you get mm-hmm. frozen. Yes. Which means you'll start the turn without any aura whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I guess people would ask, but then why is you not so? Why doesn't his box be longer? It's because he has one game plan, that's yeah, it. Exactly. His game plan is get your burst out ASAP, even though it it would kill him, and that's it. Yeah, Yeah, he does apply Hydra to himself, but he does not really care. Meanwhile, Kokomi and Barbara, they really change their game plan depending on the situation. I think the biggest thing for Zingcho is that he is not forced to act, uh, enable Hydra on, uh, splash Hydra on yeah. himself, right? Uh, Kokomi yeah. and Barbara, they have to put Hydra on themselves or they can't play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, what uh, what element we have? Is it Pyro? Is it just Pyro left? I think it's Pyro. Oh, man. Yeah, see, the element bias go crazy. Hydro has crazy amount of characters, <laughs> Electro has nine characters, and Pyro has nine characters. Oh, my. <laughs> what happened to Abyss Lecter? <laughs> oh, oh no. boy. You got so... squished to life. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's that's the lowest we've seen, no? <laughs> yeah, it is. The least amount of variance. Um, despite maybe the character being it's... very nuanced. Huh. Maybe it's just because people don't play him enough? Maybe? I don't know. I would say it could also be the fact that he doesn't have really a game plan. Just like Sinktio, he does one thing and that's about it. He tried to get his burst out, he has a revive. That's it. There's no thinking with him. I don't know. I feel like I feel like Abyss Lecter is more nuanced because of the revive. I mean, I guess you could say it is a very linear game plan. You know, once you yeah. revive, you get your burst out. But then, yeah. like, I guess Talon Card is kind of bad. But like, Talon Card is a weird. It's a weird thing. It's a very strange thing. But oh boy, we'll look at uh, Diluc and Yoimiya have very. Very big boxes. Oh yeah, they boy. have huge boxes, but if you notice the X, uh, which is their median, uh, they are completely opposite. Yeah. Then, then you look at the the bar as well. Mm-hmm. The the complete average is for Yamiya. She's just doing better than Dilik. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yamiya is similar enough to Beto, where it's like, do you have enough time to get your burst out and set up an OTK or something? Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. She's doing great. But if you go against an Agra deck, you don't have time for that. Yeah. Ah, she's not. She's not as good. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, Diluc is matchup dependent in yeah, the sense that do you go about against a bad deck? Well, he can cook against a bad deck, that's for sure. Yeah. Because <laughs> he has damage, but he only has damage and no utility. So if he goes against the proper meta deck, he's not doing anything. Yeah, you can. That's adapt- why we can also see the time. average being way lower. Yeah. The last defensive ability is Pyro Agent. Look at that. Look at that. Scale. My goodness. Another skill issue. Yep. Skill issue. Um, 
the like the the higher the higher uh, variance in the upper quartile range, I think, comes with uh, the nuance of agent talent. Because <laughs> you know, yeah. it may have not be, it, you may have not see it like since like 3.5, but I think it definitely is one of the things that have diversified the Asian game plan. Uh, even Lucky Dog yeah. came back with a uh, 3.8. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, that does it. I agree. But yeah, that is going to do it for our analysis on Luna Vin's 3.8 community source character card ratings. And of course, you know, this stuff is amazing work. You know, she not only did the graphics, but as well as all the data collection. So show some love on the original Reddit post. Gonna be the link in the description, as well as if you'd like to check out, there is the 4.0 uh, community source character rating data collection coming up. And you know, Rept, I think you disagreed with some uh, some of the rankings in this in this list. And what should you do if you want no. to fix that? I am definitely gonna vote. And for the people at home, I know you can see it on the screen. Zero equals I haven't played the card before, which means instead of giving Ember a one for being bad, you give her a zero. Mm. Please and thank you. Do not destroy her rating again. Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this is amazing work. So, and I really I really do want to uh, get people to vote on this the poll is going to end on the 19th of september so absolutely get in there uh get cra get crazy give your give your hot takes or don't maybe actually <laughs> but anyway uh that is going to do it uh this is kojo and this is rep thank you all for joining us mm -hmm. see ya goodbye <laughs>